Hello everyone. This is a quick playdate update. I still have not received my playdate. I am in group two, so hopefully I will get that within the next few months. Um, but what I have been working on is a bunch of SDK tests, mostly with Lua. I have a few with C, but these are here if you want to um, kind of look at how to do really basic things in a vacuum. And then I also have some demos here. So that this is all on this repository here. You can also get to it from my itch.io page. I have a download down here for all of the demos. Um, they're PDX files, so hopefully you can sideload them into your playdate. Um, someone was saying that they were getting errors and uh, it's kind of hard for me to test since I don't have my playdate yet, but I think I might have fixed the issues that they were <laughs> running into, so we'll see. But I'll just show you the demos I have so far. So uh, let's go into just look at the Lewis stuff first. So um, the Playdate SDK comes with its own examples, but I always find it easier to just kind of uh, do one thing at a time in an example. So you can kind of focus on this is exactly how this one thing works. So I have source code in here. And I kind of set up these projects so that I just need to run my build and run script and then I it'll run the simulator, it'll compile the source and run the simulator. Um, so the main, the this is the text, this just displays text to the screen, so I'm just going to hit build and run. So there you go, text to the screen. That's You can align it to the center, that's a really nice feature. Trying to align my text to the center when there's not like an automated thing in the library is really a pain in the butt. Um, so there's that. There's like a simple button press thing. So we do that. Look at the code. I mean, you can press a button and it will detect those. And these are just callbacks. So down here, we'll see these callbacks and so on. So this kind of goes through the really basics, drawing an image to the screen and using the sprite sheet, playing audio, drawing shapes. Uh, detecting collision, and then I have like a little um, crank visualizer as well. So if we go back here, it will just kind of show you information. So I, you know, usually zero degrees is to the right, so you just have to offset that by negative uh, 90. And then this kind of tracks where that is at, and then as you crank, you can kind of also see the crank change. So that, you know, it goes back to zero between frames. And then also the sine and cosine values. So that can be useful. Um, with C, I basically have it where it will draw text to the screen. This is the code to do all of that and get everything set up for Playdate. So um, a lot more code for just anything in C. Uh, the button press, this one has button press detection down here. Um, one thing I don't like about C is using C strings, such a pain in the butt. And then I had something for um, drawing an image to the screen. So just very, very basic C examples. Um, but the main thing here is the demos. So I have a few demos. Let's just open the terminal from here where I have, um, let's see, this is just a bouncy ball. It just bounce around the screen. I have screenshots so you can see those from the repository folder, but you can also just download all these. So if we go into Brick Breaker and run my build and run, of course, this is the build and run script only works on my machine. You'd have to kind of change uh, these paths for your own machine. But once you hit, uh, I guess it's B. I always read it as A because it's labeled A because it's the keyboard map, but you use the crank and you can do a really basic breakout and there's not like multiple levels or an end level or any in end game state noticing thing it's just an example of you know you can implement breakout and then my little paddle is separated into thirds so that kind of detects or uh dictates whether it's going to go off in that angle or straight up so it, that's just a really basic example um, this one has multiple Lua files, so this is one of my earliest ones, not my favorite source code. Uh, here's the paddle, it creates the paddle, and then it has an update function. It's kind of mocking uh, 
object-oriented programming. So this is the paddle table. This has x, y, and width and height as its members, quote unquote members. And then you can also set a label to a function, kind of like you can do it in JavaScript as well, and basically say, hey, this is what you do whenever this function is called. So then down in here, we just say paddle draw, and that takes care of that. So there's a bunch of stuff in there. Um, I was playing around with the crank for these. So if you remember gorillas.base, gorillas.bass, um, it was an old game where you would aim where you're going to go or you type in the angle of where you want to uh, shoot your banana. And then you would, I think, hit or type a, uh, sp a speed or amount, initial velocity, and it would kind of build a little arc. I don't have all that. I just have the crank and then you hit A and it shoots the bananas out at an angle. So that's an example of code that does that. That's all in here in main. So for instance, um, it detects B button and it will shoot a bullet. We have a bullet object table, which is like an array here. Um, it'll detect the crank updates, update bullets. So as it goes, it's going to continue and then it's going to be modified by the sine and cosine. So that's there if you were curious about how to do something like that. Let's look at the other uh, crank-based examples first. So this one is Moose, Mooseytron. So this one is like Robotron where you can move. This is, wouldn't really be a good game idea because you can't really move and hit the A button and move the crank at the same time. You only have two hands. But if you wanted to see kind of shooting along a... Uh, angle that shows that off. So that's all in here. Um, and then I have this, which is kind of useless. Um, it wasn't, it was, I was just playing around. So we have a Y coordinate given by the sign of the angle. And then really like, that's all it does is just, it, it keeps drawing a line and then you can kind of see the path being traced. So those were crank demos. I have some other stuff. Oh yeah, the spaceship as well. So again, this isn't like a full game or anything. This is just to kind of show like we're rotating it up to fly. So kind of a basic, how would you do an asteroid ship? Okay, um, not done with this. I was going to do like a random dungeon generator, like a roguelike. Um, mini balls is just like a stress test, but I don't have a play date to really test it out with. So all you get is just a bunch of balls on the screen. Um, menus. This has just some basic menus, but the main thing is the code here. So here's the title screen. You can go up and down, hit help, go back, hit play. And then I just have this where you click the poop, you die and go back to the title screen. But the main thing is we have our main state and it has its um, button uh, callbacks. There's a current state object and then there's a state manager that will handle changing states. So then every time you do an update, it'll update the current state. If you do a draw, it'll draw the current state and so on. And it lets you switch between states. And you have something like this help state. So then your help screen has init, update, draw, and then any other functions you need. Um, and then let's see, hitting B and your selections will go to the next state for that. So this is just an example of having some sort of state changer in Lua for your games. Um, Moose invaders. Another kind of... Um, relatively working classic arcade style game. So this one is really just with the arrow keys and the buttons. It'll play audio and then you have to just shoot, shoot the mooses. But again, there's no end state. It's just an example of getting a simple game to work. And all of the code is here in main. I know that's not always great, but sometimes I just put something together and kind of threw it all in one spot. We have our pick and sticks, of course. So this one has main, also everything in main, but also not that complicated. So we 
go around and are collecting sticks for no reason. So there we go. There's your picking sticks. And what else? Um, that's pretty much it. I was working on something to um do like SNES style text entry. Um, but I wasn't done with it. I was just kind of messing around. And then I was also working on a random dungeon generator. I don't think this even has anything worth looking at right now. There are some blocks. So then that will be there eventually. And you can use those for reference as you're working on your own games. And um, if we go back, oh, not there. So the repo, basically the licenses, you can use any of this code for whatever you want. You can use snippets, whole files, it's fine. It's all public domain, so. I mean, ideally, maybe give me a little thanks in the credit or something, but you really don't have to. You can completely forget I exist. <laughs> but that is there. Um, I'll keep updating things as I have time and have have ideas for things I want to see how I could implement for the Playdate. And especially once I get my Playdate, I will be playing with it a lot more. But just a quick update, stuff you might find interesting and for your own game development stuff.